17-year-old schoolgirl, Yael Veslovsky, was born with one arm. But that has never stopped her dream of making music. It is essential to try and do everything possible to get where you want to go, even if it does not succeed. I always wanted to play, and I didn't know if I really could. The prosthetic arm she uses to hold her bow was created by a community of volunteers called Tikkun Olam Makers, or TOM. Tikkun Olam in Hebrew is fixing the world. We believe that assistive technology is basic. It's something that anyone should have access it, no matter where he's from, and no matter his social economic status. Our products, Tom's products, we always try to make them as, as affordable and as accessible as possible. The market price for a custom-built prosthesis ranges from $3,000 to $100,000. But remarkably, Yael's cost a fraction of that. You managed to whittle it down to 60 US dollars. How? How can it be so inexpensive? What we are doing with our prosthetic arm is that we are 3D printing it. And then we need to play just with the model on the computer uh, to fit it to every user. By manufacturing with relatively cheap design resources, Tom is able to produce multiple arms that are modular so they can be personalized each time. 3D printers really allows you to create any geometry. So everything way from start and all the way to, you know, the extension of the playing the violin is all suited for Yael and for her ability. It's Yael's arm. It's, it really is Yael's arm. Before she was introduced to the makers at Tom, Yael had improvised her own method of holding the violin bow. But with her new prosthetic, performing is a different experience entirely. Everything feels a lot more natural, and that influences the tone. Now I can play using the full spectrum of the bow. And Tom is proud to develop solutions that are open source, meaning anyone can access them anywhere in the world for free. Simply download the designs, customize, and print. Yale joins an international network of users of the 3D printed arm. Noam Guez was the use case pioneer. Noam, uh, he's a 21 years old uh, wounded soldier from uh, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. He was injured uh, during training from a hand grenade that exploded in his arm. An amateur chef, the prosthetic was tailored for his use in the kitchen. He, t he came to us and he said, you know, I have a very expensive prosthetic arm uh, that costs $80,000. It's robotic, it's crazy, it has engines and batteries, um, but I don't want to wear it at home because it's heavy, it's sweaty, uh, I need to charge it. I want you to create for me a, a, a PJ prosthetic. What does the PJ stand for? Pyjama. Oh, okay. Simple enough. You're lounging at home, you bring out the PJ. Exactly. Since then, Noam and Yael have been joined by Boone in Singapore, a quadruple amputee whose life has also been transformed by the very same technology. In regards to the PJ prosthesis, what are your hopes for that innovation for the future? There are millions of people around the world uh, who live with a below elbow amputation, and the majority of them live in developing countries. So we believe that this prosthetic arm can reach to those millions of people who doesn't have access to solutions for um, you know their day-to-day -day needs. The potential is huge, the impact is massive, but what makes you most proud of this prosthetic arm? It's not about the revenue from the arm and it's really the whole process was around empathy with the users and I think that's what makes me uh, the most excited uh, around this project. Yeah. I feel more complete in myself when I'm playing. And it makes me very happy to be doing this.